Hey, good morning, YouTube. Today, we are actually going to go visit... Oh! Uh, we have a real special treat today. Today, we are going to visit somebody who is just a superstar. This guy is incredible. His name is Pierre. Now, I met Pierre when I first started my permaculture journey. I actually met him at the tree auction. So, there's a nursery nearby us, and I asked them what they do with their end-of-season stock. They said they actually hold a tree auction at the end of the fall and just get rid of the inventory. So definitely call around your local nurseries and see if they do something like that for you. For me, I thought, wow, this is an incredible gift. I can start my food forest on a budget. So that first year auction when I was there, everyone's bidding on evergreens, pines, cedars, that kind of thing. Well, this guy was bidding on all of the stuff that I wanted. He was bidding on the apples, pears, peaches, plums. He was even bidding on things like sea buckthorn. And Pierre was bidding on it, and I noticed every single time that I was bidding on some kind of permaculture or food plant, this guy was the one who I had to beat. So halfway through the auction, I went over and talked to the guy, and I just, you know, asked him about his place and told him about my place, told him about what I was trying to do. Found out that no surprise, we were both passionate about permaculture and living sustainably. This kick-started a friendship that's lasted ever since then. And I would actually consider him one of my best friends because him and I are like literally the same person. It is just so crazy how aligned we think on so many things. I've been meaning to visit him and film him for a long time. He was always hesitant because he doesn't necessarily want his place shown. Um, but I was able to convince him finally that like the world needs to see what this guy is doing and the way that his mind works. I'm not kidding when I say that he is one of the most talented people that I've ever met in my entire life. Basically, that was something that someone wanted. It was actually a company in California who found me online. I said, yeah, I can make it. So this was all ba made by hand. I made uh, everything by hand and I carved it by hand. So I can, I can draw as well. So that's my new post I will show you. So this is what I draw because I, all I needed was the line, the profile, and from there I was able to create a solid model. I will join all the G-code on my four axis, and from there I have the wooden piece. So basically what you see in the virtual making. right now mm -hmm. is gonna be in reality. Right. So then when I say, I can make you anything, I can really mean it. So this here, this little part there, I made it, you know, it had to be done. So this here was liquid, solid bronze. Mm. So literally anything I can, and I, I also produce all my tooling. So this is a system that I designed for uh, making louvers. So I designed it for a company in England for gentlemen uh, in Trinidad. So then and this is kind of a chuck system because the expansion was jamming into the frame. So with that system here, then I fix all the problem because I was working online with the architect in England. So then they had to read my mind. So then I, I couldn't really explain in words. This way, they really understood what I meant. Right. And I said to them, whatever you want, I guarantee you, I can make it. I don't know how, but I will find it. That's a real, real powerhouse. So I just turned, uh, resurfaced a clutch for a big backhoe the other day. And then they wanted like, like really like for yesterday. So I said, no problem, bring it here. And then they were back on track right away. And I really enjoyed the challenge and I enjoyed kind of, uh, you know, helping people out. And, and, and don't get me wrong, it's in my business. I, I, can pay for it, but, oh, sure. but we have an exchange, and for them, they, they, they were back on track and could keep rolling. Back back. That's the main thing yeah. because they have those guys there. If they didn't have the clutch, they couldn't do anything because they went as far as going up to the clutch. So that was the end of, of fixing the machine. Then you cannot do anything between if you don't have it. Right. So then I said, Yeah, bring it here and I will take care. So if a fellow had an F, F, an old car, 57. Any part, I can make you it. You can make it? Yeah, any, anything you bring it to me, I will make it. Wow. Without any doubt. Wow. I could build you a rocket to go on the moon. I, like I could that. work for Mr. Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. So here you have a tree that will keep giving over and over 
What I'm saying is my approach as resilient. Yeah, you would rather not. Let's say if eventually we are forced yeah. for many, many reasons, then uh, I, I'm be better to train my body to eat food that are resilient. Resi yes, I, I understand what like you're saying. This, this, this guy, this guy here would take minus 40. Right. And, and, and how often do you have a bush that grow by itself, yeah. doesn't require anything really, and produce oil, like really, really high-end protein oil, right? Yeah. So it doesn't mean that you should eat only hazelnut, but same with the, with the uh, mulberries. Mm -hmm. Like this guy there had produced so much mulberry, it was not so intense. Paul Wheaton has this scale of permaculture where, you know, as you get more and more sustainable, the people below you seem insane to you and the people above you seem insane to you. Pierre is one of those people who always drive me to be as high as possible because he's like a couple tiers above. And I'm sure that a lot of people watching this, if you're new in the gardening space and you're just getting introduced to permaculture, you're probably gonna think this guy's crazy. Why is he worrying about all of this stuff? But as you kind of get into living the permaculture lifestyle, and as you get into being even like, you know, uh, collapse aware, aware of the problems that we're facing, you start to see that this guy's kind of got it all figured out. So um, as a gift back to him, he actually runs a, a business that is like a manufacturing business. What are you doing? She's eating my tripod. If you notice the camera shaking that. you fighting everything. So he actually runs a manufacturing business and he can create anything. Uh, I really want to do him a solid and he's showing us and opening up his world to you know the entire world. I want to get him some kind of benefit and exposure for his business and what he does to actually support the lifestyle that he leads, which is an incredible one. So for those of you who like the details, you know, the numbers, the science, the engineering stuff, you like to see practical systems being used. You like to see lifestyle design, you know, changing the way that you live your life in order to be more sustainable and resilient. This is probably the best video that I'm ever going to make on that topic. So let's get going. Is, is definitely what I think will keep keep me uh, you know in in the game so what does it mean uh, I know just a little bit about your children yeah. uh, I really love them but I do know that they will never have the water and we the have. fresh air that I had when I was born yeah. that that is that is sold out right? Every time we put a liter of fuel in our vehicle, there's one hiding. You know, in the tar sand, it takes about two barrels to produce three. Yeah. So by the time you build the gas station, you transport and everything, it's, it's, it's one one. Yeah. So then you have an absolute bare minimum of 15 calories for only one. So then if you eat a thousand calories for in, in one meal, what was required was 15,000 calories to get it to where you to are. get it there right so let's say unless if you have really deep pocket every time you give me 15 bucks i give you back a dollar you know the planet is right. 13,000 kilometers right. diameter so multiply pi it's 40,000 right so then let's say you are going you know for to treat yourself to a restaurant and you say, oh, no, we're gonna have lamb. So then, right where we are here, roughly in Ontario, New Zealand is totally the opposite. It's not really Australia, it's yeah, New Zealand, it right? So then, if you had lamb, which is very popular from New Zealand, it means that your sheep travel 20,000 kilometers. 
there was a time I enjoy going there and say, oh, we go shopping, right? Yeah. So then let's buy another tool and I, I might need it eventually. So now I would rather go uh, auctions. Right. So then I give a second life, right? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a lot better to give a second life to something that, that already exists yeah. than to take one. it to the metal scrap, yeah. melt it at 1400 degrees, and make a new one yeah, yeah, yeah. like the amount of energy between so i tap into the two biggest uh industry which is aircraft automobile and and mining everything comes from there i have all, all my pairs i don't use any product or anything so Me then either. obviously you know, you have little defect and all that, but it's not, not really a big deal. But it's better than spraying. Yeah, so I have uh, autumn olive berries. So I'm we really... Have these. Yep. Yeah, I'm really into uh, uh, any, any high-end antioxidant. Any little thing there like this. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, I like oranges and bananas, but for me, they're, they're coming so far. So and, and, and in terms of calorie per let's say uh, cubic inches uh, it's it's not a good deal right and then if you eat an orange during the winter if you go with with the let's say the, 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 the Chinese uh, medicine approach uh, those foods are cooler right if it's minus 15 I don't need anything to cool me down right so so then I would rather have a lentil soup my approach as resilience my diet is is adapted to what work needs to be done right and what food so then if it's minus 15 during in the winter obviously i don't walk a lot outside so the diet is changed so then i will go more uh really high carbohydrate during the summer i would have more protein because the carbohydrate warm me up too much right so then I will change according to, mm -hmm. to what I do. So this is Pierre's passive solar greenhouse. Let me just show you from the outside before we head in. He has got stone that he excavated from his property all on the side here as thermal mass. And it's actually excavated down below the frost line. And for anyone who doesn't know these, you can also look up Wallapini. This is essentially a sunken solar thermal mass greenhouse. So the water, the, the sun comes in, warms up the barrels. The barrels are all full of water, which is a huge thermal mass. You just said, I think I heard you say, yeah. in the summer, it's just too hot in here. It's so you really turn hot. it into it's, a dehydrator. Yeah, so yeah. It's, a, it's a dehydrator here. Yeah. This yeah. is like a sauna right now. I, I know they can't You can't feel, feel it. it. But, but it's pretty, yeah. This it's, is like a sauna. You garden a lot like this fellow right here. well that's why we're a yeah lot. that's why we get along so well yeah yes. so we I, think I the same geopolitical no, exactly. we think the same in it's, a no, lot really of ways it's, uh, it's amazing yeah My, you really uh, do. the only thing is we have to get all uh um, uh uh together in austin yeah exactly. he's so busy and I, I i i must say i i tremendously admire uh his genius as as uh, a nuclear engineer yeah. uh it takes a different type of of brain i wouldn't this have is, that like absolute heaven they're, they're really oh good. these are the ground I, I cherries i adore the, the those little things they're really nice and then uh, and these oh, like when oh, when you get oh. it where they basically fall out yeah. of the package yeah. you pick oh, them off the good. ground that's when they're the best so all the all those guys there uh, <laughs> sage. Growing sage and all this that. is one of the healthiest plants that you can incorporate yeah, into your into your diet absolutely it best. is medicine this is uh Call uh, in panacea, okay, panacea. Yeah. So then let's say you have a, 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 I don't know chamomile, but it's good for sleeping. So it so, is. But it's only one, right? Yeah. So this guy has 19 properties. So if there's one plan that you, you you would allow to have, let's say only one, that is number one. So I, that is. I, I have I, that on my I property. I eat this every single day. I had that right on my property. So, uh, so when I come here, is is no rose. This it's is just, yeah. It's just this like is your, it's to balance your release. The balancing yes. of the two, right? It's how you release all the the stress and yep. which which is, I I do the exact same thing. No kidding. But for me, release is to have it in rows and nice and tight, 
and go out and pick a beet, and a beet's this size, and I'm going, oh, I'm eating this tonight. Yeah. And it tastes like honey. The the the, the main thing is but you, both is good. You go with what speaks to you. Exactly. And as soon as you do this, then you will find the real purpose of of existence in yeah. life. If you do something that you don't like and and doesn't make any sense, you are missing your life. Exactly. So that's my approach. It is mine. Yeah. Because when I'm in the garden, I could be out for eight hours and the wife's calling me and she says sometimes, I'm not calling you no more. You don't come in. I've said, well, I, I get lost out there. Yeah. I totally get lost. So that's really, I get lost very easily yeah. myself. Right? Yeah. So I'm really sorry, everyone. You are going to be watching videos of this tour for probably the next month because there's so much gold here yes. that I'm going to have to split this into probably 20 videos. And you're going to be watching Pierre and Poppy oh, for yes. the next month or two because it's this so is cool, just. Though. Look at this fig. I, I so, love it. So this is my fig tree here. So you see, I uh, I I just adore it. It's uh, and and then what what I do is I I used to have them in pot and moving them, and they were really struggling. So I found out that this greenhouse here, I put another tarp there. I got the double at the back. I, I probably get one zone extra. So basically in my greenhouse here, when everything is closed, I'm uh, Niagara on the lake zone, which right. is about six B. Right, and, and those guys are doing great with this. That's because beautiful. I did plant the same variety outside, protected and all that. Destroy, it's two borderline. Let's say out of five years, you get a cold year, they all, all die. Right. Uh, I don't remember, did you the Google these? The mount is at the back. Okay. Yeah. So the hugo works in some area, like over there, it's heaven. Over there, not as much of a good idea because it's too clay. Okay. And then I think it's kind of putrefy in it. Right. And all that's not as good. And right. over there I have another one, but this one is too high and it's too dry, it doesn't work. Right. So then I, I, I know that hugo, hugo mound works, but not everywhere. Right. We bought together when we met each other. Yep. And what I didn't know is the pow pow needs shade to start. Yes. It and, burns. And it, it's struggling. So you see, uh, what five six years ago, <laughs> later. Uh, they're slow. Stuff. They're slow growing trees also. Yeah. Eventually, I, I should get something out of it. There. I like that you kept the oak. Did you plant this oak or did you keep it? It's interesting because my neighbors planted those okay. to have like a separation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they found out that the they line grow was slowly. way over there. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> and oh. they said, well, I hope you're not going to cut them. I said, no, I will never cut them. It turns out that it's great. <laughs> and it would have cost me a fortune to have all so, those. So he planted by mistake. <laughs> That's by mistake. so cool. My, li the, my line is way off there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's stealing. He's stealing your lawn. <laughs> and then they re they, they re severed the, the land to see where we are. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So a, a lot of people may not know how good... I think I think if there's a single tree that you can plant for nature, for insects, the amount of insects, native insects that eat oak, is probably the highest of anything you can plant. Absolutely, and and the collaboration between everything together. Yeah. Oaks oaks will actually support like 500 different insects. Absolutely. So amazing. a lot of people say I'm not going to plant an oak because I'm not going to enjoy my oak. You know, it's not going to until it's a hundred years old i'm not going to actually enjoy my oak but you can enjoy an oak right away because yeah. if you plant an oak and you see that the leaves are being nibbled by something you know that you're supporting the local ecosystem tremendously yeah. and then you've got acorns for if you want to make flour with the acorns and height one of the highest yeah. sources of protein you can get off of a tree is actually it's a, 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 acorns. amazing yeah. and it's the other really thing that i do is i collect tons of eggshells and everything for this and then also I dry them and then I crush them and I give it to my layers so then this way I don't uh, I have like really solid eggshell mm -hmm. and then uh, I don't have to go into the industry of oyster shell that comes from uh, Nova Scotia or the, the, the ocean and it's uh, dry crush bag pallet transport 
Right. So this is garbage that burn, that require more diesel to get rid of. What I do is I like, for example, I grab about 75,000 pounds of leftover. Okay, so here's the bins that he collects. Yep. The food. If you take, you know, 80,000 pounds of waste that nobody wants this in the backyard, you drive it to North of Belleville where the landfill is. The garbage truck takes about uh, 35 liters per hundred kilometers. Right. So when I say I'm reversing carbon, so that's my approach as resilient. Right. And beauty is is what remove garbage out of the landfill. That is true beauty. So this is all stuff that I found. And then you see this here. What I do is uh, I grab this. I lift this up like this. I clamp it there like this. And the other one too. So I do the same thing there. So you lift, lift the thing, you put it there, put it there like this. And then I just, uh, you see I'm fairly centered because the thing is fairly heavy. And I just walk this around. <laughs> and then I just put them back there. And then they have a new uh, nice spot for, uh, for eating. And boom, I have a new, a new, uh, lawnmower. Lawnmower. And you see what they did here? They cleaned yeah, yeah. up nicely. Nice lawnmower. They move all over the place. So you see, I create like a little condo. <laughs> oh, look, he's in there. Yep. Look, they're both and, in there. And look. then what they do, as soon as I lift the thing, they just go in the house, right? Oh. So then, uh, this way. And, uh, here's my, my little mail. <laughs> I, I call him Ro uh, Robert. <laughs> so that's my little guy and then uh, I'm gonna have uh, all sorts of color rabbits so then uh, what I do is I, I really give uh, a good break to the the female so you can have them reproduce over and over so then I just have them have maybe a couple couple litter a year or something mm. so it, it's not like I, I'm going into mass production right. like, so. For me, as long as it works for me, yeah. and I long, as long as I don't create anything that harm uh, animal, people, or, or whatsoever. Exactly. So then I have a couple more there, and then I have my little forest over there, so that's about, about, about it there. So one thing that I found recently is those chickens, those, those are Chanticleer. So, les, les champs de Claire were made by the Père Trapis uh, uh, à Oka, au Québec, uh, in 1927, I think they were recognized. So then basically those are dual. Oh. So then they, uh, they are meat and layers at the same time. And they are like bulletproof to anything, cold, heat and all that. So then I have uh, a male and two females, so then I will I will be able to eventually have babies. So they're great, great layers, and very easy going. Look at the size of the, the male, right? Oh, you have a lot of meat. Oh, so, so the reason why I, you know, when I talk about resilience, so I exercise a lot, so then I, I need to have a strong body mm -hmm. to, to do everything. So then let's say if, if a task can be done by hand, I do it instead of jumping into the tractor and burning fuel. Right. So then I do, and then it's not, it's not that bad, it's not really heavy, so then I, I move this around. And then, so you see this one, this one doesn't have anything underneath. No, I yeah. see that. So, and it's, you know, it's not too bad. No, it's not bad. Yeah. So then I move, move them around, and then they perch there, they perch at the back. And then they have uh, the nesting there, oh, the lily eggs. So you see, I collect from uh, 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 Markets More, Millstone, and Electric Juice Factory. Right. So then, uh, and, you, and you see all this beautiful bread that was throw in, that would be throw in the garbage. Yeah. You know, so so then I collect everything. So it got wet a little bit. And then the chicken, they adore this, and they lay eggs like crazy. And I mean, the, the amount of protein that I still have there is, is enormous, right? Mm -hmm. So when I look at this, there was a time I was mowing and at where are we going with all that waste and blah, 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 blah. 
then I realized I was going to bed at night and feeling like like not not too happy. Mm -hmm. So now there's no more mowing and 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 you know whining because it's okay. Here's here's the the the, the, the thing. What can I do? If I cannot do anything for it, well then move on to something else. But it's amazing how much we can do, right? So then, can you imagine 80,000 pounds a year that I'm collecting? It's a lot of, lots of calories. It's not going to the dump no more. Yeah, and then what was a mix of garbage and diesel is turned into high-end protein. You cannot beat an egg for human being food. Right. It's the top of the top. You got, right. you got all the uh, essential amino acid. You got the nine amino acid for baby. Baby ne you need nine. We need eight. So then I have like the absolute best. On top of it, I don't have to kill animal. No. Don't get me wrong. I, I do it. It's not something at all that I enjoy. Right. So, so then I and I, I always do it very sustainably while they are eating. Well, also, like, isn't it? It's frustrating that we live in a time where there's so much waste, but at the same time, it's a bit of a blessing for those of us who understand yeah. what you can tap into yeah. of the amount of waste that's being thrown out there because we head. don't live, nobody has ever lived in an opportunistic time like we do now. There's so much waste that's thrown out that is gold it's that we can gold, get. Yeah. And yeah. it's interesting that you know that the reason we. We came from two different worlds. So for me, since I started adopting this attitude as resilient, suddenly I look around and, and I live in paradise. And, and all my neighbors are really wealthy. What they throw in the garbage. There was a time I was going there at night feeling like, you know, I, I felt feeling like, like, a, like, like a, 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 a homeless. So now I jump into the, the, the container and then I grab whatever. Like you see, they build a third houses uh, at the bottom yeah. there. Like like containers of good stuff going to the landfill. So 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 the little barn is all scrap that I found, and the metal was from a barn that burned. And then I put this up together. I woke up one day and I said, "Geez, I have to be a farmer again." And within two weeks, I couldn't sleep, and I designed it and built it. So it turns great, I'm very happy. Yeah. That's nah, really cool. If someone wants a little barn like this, I can build them an exact copy of it. So, so you, here's the sheet. So uh, the details are gonna be actually in the video description. So yeah. if you wanna get in contact with Pierre to build you something like that, then you can actually do that. That is uh, that's not just a thing he's saying, like he will actually do that for you. Here's another mulberry. And I wanted to kind of trim it to look good underneath. So I just put the sheet there. Oh, and trimmed it with the sheet. They did a great job. So, so they also arborist it. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So and all, mulberries all, very healthy yeah. leaves for them too. All those guys there are cutting the grass over there. They pruned it down. They pruned everything. You so you see, see they're, right they're, the they're cleaning up the forest. Mm -hmm. And then here's my pile of compost that I turn over and all. Growing that. squash out of it. Yeah. Volunteers probably. Yeah. And then the big greenhouse over More there. Bees. I just clean everything up. And then all my animals that are pasture during the winter go and stay there for a few months because under the snow it's too, 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 too. Uh, where I uh, move my sheep around. So oh, this is a, this sheep? is a sheep. Yeah. So, so you see the little tractor. gate there. Yeah. I just park it in front. Okay. And then they are so well trained they just go in. And then what I do is they I cut the grass too. What, what I do, what I do is I grab this here like this. I close the gate. All the sheep are in, and then I walk, and the sheep walks with me, right? Because I, 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 I would have a hard time to carry 1,500 pounds of sheep, right? Yeah. You... <laughs> so then they walk with me, and then let's say if I mow over there, so then, uh, then I bring them over there, and then I put water, put the little electric fan, make a little loop, and open the thing, and then they go there for the day, they clean up everything, and then at night I bring them back, and and then it works. Uh, it works great. And this is all fencing that I found, old wheels on on uh, a little cart, and then all the wood that I found. Basically, the only thing that I use new is the screws. Mm. And my uh, my bees, uh, those are so amazing because the their their frequency is the same as the earth. 
So then you just come here and you want to calm down. Uh, it's, it's, it's a miracle. It's an absolute miracle. The amazing thing is they recognize me. Oh, really? They, they recognize the, the owner. So that's right. the, the absolute amazing. So I got five hives now. That's a cherry. It looks yeah, very happy. And look at the size of it. Yeah. So it seems to be happy on the over now. So this is a huge hugel here. Here have uh, lots of aska, yeah. and then uh, here's another chicken coop. So then I turn this into uh, like a little greenhouse. So then they lay eggs a lot uh, because they have light. I, I I don't want to use any artificial lights or anything. No. So this 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 way it works great. some corn there and also here I have my another patch of beans oh. that is uh, doing really well and uh, and then here's a patch of Carrot. car carrots so one thing I found is what I do is I put mulch and then with a piece of wood I put a piece of wood there so I, I compact mulch and I have little block like inch one inch by one inch so I put them together and then I pack this, I remove my piece of wood, I put a little bit of nice earth, and then I plant the seeds, and I put some some uh, uh, charcoal on top, mm -hmm. and then I have no weed. No need to weed anything, it works so well, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And here's my new concept, uh, pallets and stuff that I found. Very, very. It's the two-way bed that I put up yeah. together, and then a greenhouse during the summer is kind of use, useless. So then I put this up here. So what, what I'm gonna do when it starts getting cold, I will have a plastic there, plastic over there, and a door there. And then I come here, and this is all used as trellises. And uh, I can, uh, look what I get there, it's amazing. And then if I do weeding or anything, it's like 18 inches like a seed. So then I can do the cleanup and everything, and I can just sit, sit here. And so that's kind of a new concept that I'm kind of creating the bumblebees. Uh, so then that's, and here's another frame that I found. So I will put a tarp on it and I have lots of glass and stuff. So then I, that will be another greenhouse. So yeah, I, I want to make sure that like, that as we're doing this, I can show people your talent. Oh, that's right. good. That's good. And I, how, I, I like really how appreciate skilled it. you are. Exactly. Yeah. I really appreciate it. That's, yeah. uh, that's good. I, like, I, I live a lot into my world, so yeah. I, I thought maybe it would be interesting to share, oh, yeah. uh, as they say, an old man in Africa. I think that's the saying in Africa. They say an old man who died is like a library that burns. Yeah, exactly. So if I can inspire people a little bit. Uh, so, so that's that's m my, my approach is as soon as one little piece of the puzzle fall. We all crash. Mm -hmm. And history had showed it. You actually pull that back to like geopolitical. You've got countries who are really good at producing wood, like Canada. So we get really good at that and we have a really good lumber industry. You have other places who are really good at mining potassium or mining coal or producing microchips. So you've got all of these, this sophistication and specialization that's going on right now. But it's the, it's the coal, oil, abundant energy that's supporting that so so as soon as you can't ship something that cheaply from around the world so you ship a micro uh, microprocessor from Taiwan over to Texas to get installed into a Tesla and you ship all of these parts and you add up all the parts that are just getting shipped everywhere as soon as oil starts going because oh, I mean it's not renewable as soon as oil starts running out and everything starts getting the actual true cost of the energy that we use because we found a billion years of oil and now we've exploited it in a hundred so as soon as that little party's over you've got all of these countries who are really good at one tiny little thing all these businesses that are good at one little thing interfacing they with, all with six you know yeah and when you know when you're really good at one thing I'm really good at something else and you're yeah. good at something else and we trade then we bring the cost of everything down yep. because I can make all the bananas that everybody needs and you can make all the microprocessors everyone needs, right? 
and we bring the cost of everything I'm down. making potatoes. Right. There you go. Once oil starts <laughs> going up and we start paying the true cost of yeah. things and I have to start making my potatoes and microprocessors as well, oh, well that's a then nice start. everything costs eight times as much. And as soon as uh, that happens... Way, way more than that. Yeah, is yeah. Any, yeah, yeah, as soon as that happens, like civilization is going to completely and utterly collapse. In order to understand, without going into really complicated now, a hundred watt, like the old bulb, bulb right? Yeah. So you put uh, an athlete, and it has to be an athlete, on on a, on a bicycle with a, a little uh, generator. Yeah, they used to have them for the lights. Yeah. yeah. So, so I had one the, on my bike years when I was a kid. Yeah, the person will have to go full throttle to keep it fully light, light and yeah. all. You have nice long hair. And and, and and you like to wash them and dry them, so you have a, you, you just got a great 1500 watt air dry, and then for half an hour, you know, you, you do this. So basically, what you had right there just to dry your hair, 15 Olympic athletes on their bicycle oh, paddling right. for half an hour. Just for me to dry my hair. Just for so then, if you look at the full spectrum of of a Canadian. We have the equivalent of 400 slaves working each. for us each. Yeah. Multiply 40 million. Wow. Every single day. Right. So then, this is a very simple example. And the fact that now you tap into the tar sand and, and the, the fracting and all that is because there's no abundance, right? Uh -huh. as, as it was, yeah. yeah. You're running the, out. You can point at them, even if every time you point at someone, there's three finger pointing at you, that those are great, great polluter. It's a lot easier to do something by yourself, to retrain yourself, mm -hmm. than wait till the system tells you that yeah. now you have to now you do. Yeah. So that's a oh, little bit and, my... And you're starving, and your kids have no food. That's the so thing. Now go yeah. learn how to yeah. save seed and grow, grow your own food. Yeah. And, and, and uh, find we, energy. And we all know how to grow our own food because yeah. we've been doing it. Yeah. Like, I'm actually taking a basket of food to my cousin to go up for two days. I, and this one I picked out of my garden. Beets, lettuce, onions, leeks, carrots, peppers, uh, beans, potatoes. I put it all in a basket amazing. and I'm taking it to his house. Yeah. So that's amazing. You know what I mean? It only took me, because I save seeds, yeah. right? So which you have to buy them. Which is great. Right? Yeah, yeah, so great. it only took me, my energy. To do it. As soon as I use something too complex that I cannot figure out how it works, fix it, I'm becoming very, very weak. I, I designed and built a house, so I had a crew to help me to frame, and then the rest, then over the years, I, I did the rest. So I'm still kind of in the process. Of it. So I designed the uh, uh, everything and then as I said I had a crew to help me to frame and all that and then the rest I, I, I work this out and I build it. So here's my little, uh, little room. I love plants, I love uh, aloe. So I sit there quietly and then I have my books and then uh, I'm also working on a wood uh, uh, gasifier so that's another approach that I want to go in. Uh, so I, you know, all the wood is wood that I found, I mill and then put it up together. So and I like the open concept. Yeah. So uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the high ceiling and then uh, and the, uh, got sea buckthorn hanging in here. Yeah. yeah. So to dry. I, I kind of dry this for uh, for the fruit uh, uh, as well. So and then. Uh, I nailed the floor, so I did the kitchens and all, all winter long, uh, all the cooking is done with wood, all the wood that I find, pallets, all the wood left over from my manufacturer in the shop. So then I use all that as well. And then I dry all my plants, uh, my kombucha, uh, my, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, chaga. So oh, chaga the, the mushrooms. Chaga that I found the wood, uh, and then uh, like sumacs and uh, all that, uh, all that stuff. Then we can go downstairs. It might be a little bit dark. A little Airbnb. Uh, it's just like kind of very cozy with friends mm -hmm. that they come and they want to have like a little tour of the farm or something. 
So is this open to people? Like, would people watching the video be able to actually rent your Airbnb? Yeah, if they'd like to come. So I'm not really on the thing and all that, but then if, if that's it, people would like to come and have a little tour so I can explain a little bit my approach. So there's a bunch of stuff that I have in sale, uh, the, uh, my honey, and then uh, my friend and I, we have uh, a really nice uh, sugar bush in Montant Blanc, and we produce uh, really high-end uh, maple syrup and different product uh, as well, like butter and things like that. This is a super boiler. Uh, it's rated B415, so it has like the highest rating for particle per hour, and it's it's a wood border. So all the wood that I find, dead wood and all that, anything I would cut. And even right now, you see, I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty pretty hot. So I have a second loop in it, so then it heat up all my domestic hot water so then I don't use any energy to heat up the, the water. The other thing is all my grains are organic grains that I buy from a source that I know, one farmer, and everything I do is it's all sprouted. So this is morning, this is night, and then what I do is I sprout everything, all my grain for feeding all my animals including me, so what I do is I dry this and then from, for myself and I have a, a stone mill so then I make my own flour for all my cooking and then I use sourdough so then it's all pre-digested so then here is, uh, I produce, I have uh, roosters and chickens and all that so then uh, I'm, I'm doing all the incubation for my little that's an incubator little chip, yeah that is so cool so, uh, and here's my system. So in the basement, I knew that when I started digging the foundation, there was a spring. So then I have endless, amazing crystal water. And from there, so you see, it's all running all the time. So I install another pump here. Sometimes I can, I can draw three forty-five gallons of water. Uh, a day to water the garden so I don't want to use any of my good filtered water from my well so then I get all that from I'm struggling I, I don't struggle no you no, don't I'm, no, I'm, I'm you not don't struggle I, I would never call myself a, a, a survivor I, I, no. I, I'm a survivor is someone who's struggling and, and surviving I'm not surviving no, I'm really fighting good man Please. I can uh, manufacture uh, pretty much anything so uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, my profession as a pattern maker for foundry, so uh, I used to build uh, aircraft and uh, we were in military equipment and cars and mining industry and everything. So then I left and started my own job. So then I do pretty much anything, milling, uh, high-end restoration, metal, wood, anything. So then I program everything and anything really uh, you could need for machines, for furniture, for fixing things, uh, casting, uh, gears, uh, any tools, really uh, pretty much any, anything. And then I would buy secondhand machines and re rebuild them, transform them into different system. I would install different system on it, like hogs and everything. Uh, here is my CNC lathe. So basically, I install a lathe, so then I, I would have the, the spindle turning, and then I made a tool. So from there, I do all the programmation, and put this in the computer, and then it turns to what you want, whatever I want. So all, 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 all of so then I had this on the machine. So you put it there, you put your piece, you move it, go up and down. So then I woke up one, one day and I said, I'm gonna have this fully automated. So then what I did is I create, I went into my shop, I had lots of metals and parts and everything. So then I create a, an attach that goes there. And then I would remove this here. And then I put a vise, I put the wood in and then 
With my CAD CAM, I have a cycle that's called drilling cycle. So then I can go the feed that I want, the speed. I can dwell. I can go a little bit, get out, a little bit, get out. And then I install this and I, I program everything. And then I was fully automated. So basically what you see in the it's, virtual it's right now mm -hmm. is going to be in reality. Right. So then when I say I can make you anything, I can really mean... I don't know if you see well. We'll go from the Yes, yeah, I can see. I don't know if you yeah. check it up. So you, see, see it. so you see from there, all I needed was one thing, was this line here. As soon as I had this line with all the measure and the center, and I went and, and create the, uh, it's called wrapping around the axle of this, and I create my solid model neural post. I'll center it like this. And what you saw on the CAD moving back and forth like this, and this rotary table turning, 4.5 degrees, then it was shaping the shape of the neural post. And then for the finishing, I will put it on the lathe there that is turning, and it will just, just smooth, it. smooth it up, and then I, I don't even have to send anything, literally, the, 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 the finishing is absolute perfection. Wow. So I made a, uh, an altar for a church once, and uh, so that was the, the result of it. So I so, find metal like this. So where just would go. you go to find that? Where would you go? Let's say a, a manufacturer, manufacturer, uh, I don't know, tables. So then uh, all the, the tubing, it could be round, could be square, and it's uh, 20 foot length. So they only need maybe 18 inches, yes, but yes. but the money involved in, in in using shorts is way too much. So they will they will buy tons of 20 foot length. So then if they, they take out X amount of 18 and there's little parts that are you know let's say 12 inches goes to scrap metal, and then they right. put this into a container and it's remelted into a 20 foot length bar. So what I do is I grab those bars. And if I need a little bit more length, I just weld it together. Right. Right? Like here, that was all scrap metal. Right. Right. And the bigger the manufacturer, the, 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 the leftover can be six foot. Because if it's I beam that are 50 feet, a, a six foot is, is scrap. Right. Then I will grab it. Yeah. Right? So and, and I get it for the price of weight. Right. Per pound. So it's way, way cheaper. Yeah. And and because I work by myself, I don't have, you know, a bunch of employees waiting. You should be writing some of this stuff down. Yeah. But it's not lost. Yeah, maybe. Like you see, I would grab this, I put this in my head. Exactly. And I rotate. But it. if you were to write this stuff down, yeah. and then it's not lost. Because you know, fifty years from now you won't be here. Yeah, I, I think I will be here. I, I, I have another 50 years of my time. <laughs> yeah, I hope you are. I hope, I, for sure. God, I hope you are. You should have said 100. So you see, and if this, you said 100, you might still be around. Right. This, uh, this is a little candy that I made a little mold for. Oh, so, candy. So that's a little candy. Oh, that's... So when he says he can make anything, he means literally. If you have, yeah. if you need something. Yeah, I can, and, I can really. And actually, what's, what's the name of your business? Like. <laughs> We've been talking about oh, you. Uh, like, let, let's get people so I, they know they know what you're talking uh, about. People want to contact so you. So if you want, so so it's uh, Atelier Moulin Noir, and then you have my phone number, so you can contact me there. You can see my web, and from there you can contact me if you have any project. And so. It's not, it's nice when you got when you have to do business with someone and you know that their ethics line up with your ethics as well. So that makes a big, big difference. So for, for me, you, you obviously I, I, I have a, a manufacturer, I have to make a living and all that, but, yeah. but 
but price wise and what I can offer and, and produce, uh, I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm really up there. Hey, so one thing I get asked all the time on my channel is if I like take on volunteers or um, you know, people who would actually come live on my land and learn off me. Is that a, yeah, is that a, something you've ever considered? I, I, I did and now I do more. If I were to kind of get along well with a person. That's like, almost like, like I said, like kind of writing things down. The, the woofer type of thing. Yeah, right? yeah. So I Cause would, you have like, you, I could teach permaculture yeah. and I could teach nuclear theory if they yeah. wanted it, but they don't. <laughs> You can but they teach. Would want this. You yeah. can teach. This, with this is so yeah. much. Yeah, like Something, you can teach yeah. real sustainability. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like jack of all trades types. Yeah. This is why I asked you if something did happen, this knowledge is lost. Yeah. So right? That's yeah. And we don't want to lose it. We need it. We, we already. Uh, we need that there. kind of yeah. knowledge. But I think soon enough we will see. We're young enough to to we're gonna see it. That is coming back. Mm -hmm. It's not. I really it's hope not, so. It's not. It's well, not, by, necess by necessity, yeah, it's right? Not, like it's people not, are going to live uh, or die whether It's they're... not if, it's when. It's when. when. So that, that for me, I'm, I'm, because everything is, it, we went way, way too far. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not sustainable. Yeah. Anything that is not sustainable will collapse. It's not, it's not if, it's when. Exactly. So, so that's, that's how I... Uh, exactly. Enjoy this. This is good. I'm really glad. I'm really yeah. looking forward to see what uh, we'll add from it. And then yeah. we'll... We'll see. Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, thanks for letting us come. Yeah, so that was good. Yeah.